just duking it out all game long. There you are. You see them, 76ers against the Bulls. Richard, this was an offensive show. I, look, I, I'm sorry. I've been watching a lot of basketball for a lot of years, and some of the moves that I'm starting to see Joel Embiid whip out, there's not many players, let alone big men, that can do it. But DeMar DeRozan, he was just absolutely impressive. He was battling, trying to keep his team in it. But there's nothing you can do. When your big man can hit a Euro sidestep and then go dunk it, that's just difficult. But look at this right here. Little floater taking his time. Whatever you want from DeMar. He had 26 points in the first half. That's a career high in the first half. But, you know, Joel Embiid, he had answers all night long. Let's go ahead to the fourth quarter. Look, when we uh, – I just did the Dallas-Philly game, and Joel Embiid is trying to be the MVP. He understands what that takes, but DeMar DeRozan, all-star starter, this man is leading this Chicago Bulls team like a veteran should, but sometimes you just go against a big fella that can do too much, and it's just you don't even know what to say because look at this. He, it's just too big. He's too agile. He's too mobile. Then he gets into his bag. He's already the biggest, strongest guy, and now he's hitting you with step backs? Like, come on. At this point in time, I'm starting to get frustrated for the other team. Well, Embiid finished with 40 points, 10 rebounds. Woo! I want to say that's like light work for him he's been doing that all season long but look take a look at the Eastern Conference standings here because five teams at the top they're separated by just a game and a half and then the top eight they're separated by just four and a half games so I want to bring in our panel of Richard Jefferson Shanae Gumake and our friend Kendrick Perkins and I want to start with you Perk what team do you trust the most in the East right now let me hear this nonsense. oh uh, this whole this all is no it's not nonsense not at all <laughs> I'm going, I'm going with the team that was in the finals two years ago representing the East, the guys that's going to be waiting on you in the back alley with a ski mask on. That's them goons from Dade County. Look, when you talk <laughs> about the Miami Heat, when you talk about the Miami Heat, we're talking about arguably the best starting defensive five in the NBA. When it comes down to defense, they cross all, they check all the boxes. They have shooting. And, and, and uh, Duncan Robinson, they have a stud coming off a of bench in Tyler Hero. We already know what Jimmy Buckets could do on both ends of the floor. They have everything you want in the big and bam out of the bio. He, he's able to switch one through five defensively. He got nice post work. He got everything. Live thread at the basket. Best coach in basketball. And on top yes. of that, they got leadership. UD, Udonis Haslam. Holding everybody accountable. That was a nonsense, Richard. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. That was a, it, look, it's the Milwaukee Bucks. At the end of the day, the Milwaukee Bucks are the yeah. most trusted team. Why? Because they've been the most consistent team. Look, maybe not in the postseason, but over the last four seasons, they have been the most consistent team. Then you add what they were able to do in the finals and finally getting that monkey off of their back. When their big three plays, they are absolutely elite. My one question is with no Brooke Lopez, right? That's the one question. He was a stretch five. He was great defensively. He opened the floor and allowed Milwaukee Bucks to just be a more physical you know size and it was just dominant so that is a team that I trust the most I like Miami but you can't count out the defending champions you know I just mentioned the Cleveland Cavaliers is the best defense in the east well to add to your point Richard and I'm so mad that I have to agree with Richard Perk I'm sorry bro bro but the best offense in the east is the Milwaukee Bucks and they have seven players that are almost averaging double figures led by Giannis Antetokounmpo who's on cruise control anytime he steps on the floor I know we're celebrating Joel Embiid and John Morant and all these great players right now but it's just easy for Giannis to you know go out there and get a huge double double so the Bucks have few questions the motivation for them to repeat that'll be interesting to follow man I'm sorry Perk but it's yeah. gonna be 3-1 lead I'm yeah. going with the Milwaukee Bucks Look, too I, defending champs I feel sorry for y'all lost because it, go look at what the Milwaukee Bucks has done when they faced the Miami Heat this season they swept and go them look last at year in the numbers. first round go, go talk that go talk look at that. Okay. go 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 look at Giannis. Go look at Giannis numbers this season against the Miami Heat. They are ridiculous, and I'm not talking about in a good way. But look, yeah, they <laughs> swept the Miami Heat. But that's but that's before that's before they got Kyle Lowry and PJ Tucker. See, Milwaukee Bucks took PJ Tucker for granted. I'm telling you that right now. Hmm. And then you let him go to Miami down there where he fits perfectly well in the culture. And by the way, one person we forgetting about. Is Victor Oladipo? He haven't even been back yet, and he's on the he's on the verge of coming back for the Miami Heat. So now they get even stronger. 
I did say the Miami Heat are the most dangerous team in the Eastern Conference. You did, I still believe that, but the Milwaukee Bucks are Don't the team. Don't try to defense. They're the team to beat. Don't the Milwaukee the Bucks are the team to beat. All right, let's check. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.